The following is an orientation to the Canyon's Teacher Effectiveness Support System, or CTES, for CTE coordinators. CTES has been approved and authorized by the Utah State Board of Education as a valid and reliable tool for evaluating teachers in Canyon School District. CTES for CTE coordinators is founded upon the Utah Effective Teaching Standards, Canyon School District's MTSS framework, and the CTE standards. The law requires that all provisional, probationary, and career educators be evaluated yearly. Educators must be evaluated with a reliable and valid evaluation instrument consistent with the Utah Effective Teaching Standards. Administrators must address the needs of educators whose performance is not effective or minimally effective. Newly hired licensed employees are provisional with the district for three years. A district employee who accepts another position that is substantially different from a position in which career status was achieved, for example, a teacher who accepts the position as a teacher specialist, is returned to provisional status in the new position for three years. A mentor will be assigned to all provisional educators. Provisional and probationary educators will be evaluated yearly. A performance quality rating, or PQR, will be assigned at the mid-year conference, with a summative overall rating, or SOR, being assigned in the spring. Career educators will be evaluated using one of three phases. Phases one and two are growth years, and phase three is a summative year. CTES is a comprehensive process designed to support professional growth and excellence of educators. CTES strives to improve student outcomes by helping educators identify areas of strength and growth in the context of research validated practices through meaningful feedback, team collaboration, professional learning, and ongoing coaching. The many purposes of CTES include ensuring that every student receives high quality instruction every day, developing and supporting effective and highly effective educators, developing a collaborative professional culture to facilitate student learning, recognizing and promoting the use of evidence-based instructional priorities, standards-based teaching and reporting, and professional behaviors, appraising educators according to their effectiveness, and providing a basis for decisions affecting employment. CTES has three components based on state law. The performance quality rating, making up 70% of the final rating, that includes self-assessment and goal setting, lines of evidence for each standard, and the ethical conduct checklist. A student growth response, making up 20%, and the stakeholder input response, making up 10%. These three components combine into a summative overall rating. CTES ratings are highly effective, indicating an educator who has excelled. Effective, indicating an educator whose performance has met the standard. Emerging effective, indicating a provisional educator whose performance is minimally effective. Minimally effective indicating a career educator whose performance has not met the standard for successful teaching, and not effective, indicating an educator whose performance has not met the standard for successful teaching. If a provisional educator's performance quality rating or summative overall rating is not effective, the educator will receive supports, a memo of concern with identified assistance, and will be notified that employment with the district is in question. If the provisional educator's PQR or SOR is emerging effective, effective, or highly effective, the provisional educator advances to the next CTES cycle. Once a provisional educator has successfully completed year three requirements, the educator attains career status and advances to phase one of the career educator growth cycle. Please note, for career educators, the summative overall rating received during Phase 3 of the growth cycle will be retained during Phases 1 and 2. Phases 1 and 2 are growth years, which require self-assessment and goal setting and a response to student growth. If a career educator's performance quality rating or summative overall rating is minimally effective or not effective, the educator will receive supports, 
a plan of assistance, which may not exceed 120 school days, and notification that employment with the district is in question. It is the educator's responsibility to improve performance to satisfactory levels. Cycle 1 is then repeated. While on a plan of assistance, if the career educator's second PQR is effective or highly effective, the educator is in advance to phase one, removed from probation, and career status is reinstated. Please note, career educators who have been placed on probation for unsatisfactory performance and are again unsatisfactory within a three-year period are subject to non-renewal or employment termination pursuant to state law and district policy. If, after the second cycle, the educator's rating is still minimally effective or not effective, the educator then continues the plan of assistance and is placed on probation. If the educator's rating after the third round is still minimally effective or not effective, the educator's employment with the district is terminated. For your information pursuant to Utah State Law, career educators whose plan of assistance spans two contract years may not advance on an adopted salary schedule. Here is a review of the processes for C-Test and what is required for each component. The performance quality component of C-Test consists of several requirements. First is self-assessment and goal setting, also known as the professional growth plan, which correlates with student growth. Each educator must complete a self-assessment and professional growth plan and set goals. The supervisor reviews the self-assessment and professional growth plan and may communicate with each educator about the growth plan in a conference or email. The other portions of the performance quality rating or PQR include lines of evidence for each standard and the ethical conduct checklist. Career educators in phase three and all provisional educators will receive a performance quality rating based on the lines of evidence for each standard and the Ethical Conduct Checklist. Feedback for Provisional Year 1 educators is due November 30th. The Performance Quality Rating for Years 2 and 3 Provisional Educators is due January 30th. The Performance Quality Rating for Year 1 Provisional Educators is due March 30th. And the Performance Quality Rating for Phase 3 Career Educators is also due May 30th. The Performance Quality Rating is then calculated based upon the effectiveness rating for each standard using the rating decision rubric. The student growth component of C-Test consists of a reflection on student growth. Educators will reflect on student growth. This reflection can become part of the self-assessment and goal setting for the next year. The stakeholder input component of C-Test consists of a reflection based on stakeholder feedback. Stakeholders will be surveyed. Educators will reflect on and respond to the stakeholder feedback. Responses will receive an effectiveness rating. The information from the performance quality rating, stakeholder input, and student growth are then used to determine a summative overall rating, or SOR. At the end of your conference for the summative overall rating, you will review your professional growth plan to determine if goals were met and determine your summative overall rating. Your supervisor will then submit your signed summative overall rating to Human Resources by May 30th. Following the end of your conference, a copy of the SOR will be placed in your personnel file. If desired, you may submit a written response to any or all parts of the evaluation and have that response attached to your evaluation. You have 15 days after receiving the evaluation results to request a review of the evaluation process. The complete C-Test Manual for CTE Coordinators, which contains all benchmark criteria, can be found on C-Test Dashboard or by contacting your supervisor. If you have any questions regarding this presentation, please feel free to contact your supervisor or Sandra Dahlhulahan in Human Resources. Thank you.